Dr. Deep Sea coming down here at the habitat and we're bringing fresh fruit and vegetables because you should always eat well, right? And Dr. Hines came down and he brought bananas. Well, bananas explode. Hey guys, everybody keeps asking me how deep I am. Well, I am this deep pressure wise. This was a bottle. It is now squished in almost half. So that is exactly how deep we are, the bone crushing depth of 22 feet of seawater. But it's about 1.6 times the pressure that you're at on the surface. So here we are. The more you know about science, let's rock this thing. Everyone, it's Dr. Deep Sea, aka Dr. Joe D. Tori, living in my undersea habitat for the next 100 days. And guess what, guys? We are going to science the shit out of this. That's right. <laughs> We're going to be living under here. We're going to be talking about biomedical engineering, doing experiments in biology and biomedical engineering. We're going to be talking to the who's who of the undersea realm, and we're going to be having a good time. So tune in to this channel. And we're going to do some great stuff. Let's get it. This right here is my view. That's the view that I get to see every morning. I get to look out there and see my friend that's the lobster down there. His name's Fred. Keep asking me, how do you work out? How do you stay fit underwater? Well, this little tutorial is gonna walk you through it, so pay attention. So because I'm about 6'1", and there's about six foot of usable space, there's no way for me to reach up and do pull-ups in here. So you have to get kind of creative and use this thing to your advantage, like the chutes that we have, which are going in and out. So, this is how you work the back in here. It's not easy, but it certainly is doable. Bringing down weight seems really ridiculous, so what we do in its stead is we use these bands and we try and affix them to the table and get that pull in. Another thing that's exceptionally important is yoga. You have to remain flexible, you have to stretch. Your shoulders get jacked up, so you really need to be able to stretch underneath and pull these things out. It's kind of the problem when you don't have an overhead lift, so good for you. Another old standby is those good resistance bands that they have similar type stuff on the International Space Station because it's impractical to take weights or lead weight underwater. So bicep curls, you can modify this to do tricep curls. You can use the stretchy bands mounted to the wall. External rotation, internal rotation. You can take care of the shoulders really well. Lots of work can be done. You just have to be, you just have to be ingenuitive, right? on day 49 of a 100-day expedition to do three things. One is biomedical research on myself. Two, outreach to people, outreach to kids, to talk to them about science, technology, engineering, and math. And third and finally, I get visiting scientists down here to talk about their stuff so that we can talk about preservation, protection, rejuvenation of the marine environment. Importantly, I wanted to talk to you about the space that I'm living in. So here I am at the end of a 20 foot tube that is eight feet in diameter, but realistically usable space is about three and a half feet wide. It's about six feet tall. So we have a sink, 
We also have a coffee maker, because I can tell you this from, from experience, science does not happen without coffee. We also have a microwave right down here. And the only thing that I can cook with is a microwave, because, because the laws of physics and partial pressure of oxygen is increased when I get down here. So the partial pressure of oxygen is about 36%. That means I can't have an open flame, I can't have a cooktop, nothing like that. The only thing we can cook in is a microwave. So we have to work around this type of stuff.